Hi, this is JP Morgan. Today on the Sidelines, we're going to talk about continuous light on set for still photography. Now, this is not normally what I use to shoot large set production pieces, but we're going to shoot some big, large set production pieces with 100 loom cubes, 100 of them. But the principles we're going to talk about here today are the same if you're shooting with 10 of them, with two of them, or with 100 of them. So let's get started. Let's see what we can do. Before you watch the lesson, get over to thatslimelens.com where you can sign up to win all of these battery solutions from Indie Pro Tools. All those solutions that they make for a DSLR, whether it's Canon or Sony, get over there and sign up. You know, continuous light is about the ability to see what it is you're setting up. It's really the easiest way to set up and to learn how to light is using continuous light sources. So today we're going to do our setups, all three of them, using continuous light. We're going to talk about the ratios between the different lights and seeing that as we set each one up. It's really a fascinating principle. A key light generally wants to be about a stop less than a rim light. You set your aperture and your shutter and your exposure for the key light. Now, the rim light is just a little brighter and gives us a nice separation from the background. The same with the light that we throw onto the background. We want that to be a little brighter. That's going to give us the nice separation that we want. But it's a matter of how we diffuse them and how we ratio them to be able to give us the light that we want. If you have a single light source, let's say single continuous light source, doesn't matter how big it is, this size to that size, that will give you an f-stop on camera. If I want something in the background to be able to light me from behind, I don't want my key light to be the same value as my rim light because I want the rim light to be a little harder to be able to separate the person better. So I'm going to take and put a piece of diffusion in front of this and bring the value down on this, open my aperture up, that brings the value up on this and allows it to be harder from behind. Now, if I don't want to ratio these to one another and I want this on full power, then I aim this as my key light. Now, this rim light's not going to be punchy enough. It's not going to do what I want it to do. If I want to raise this by one stop, I have to add a second light. F8, F11. F8, F16. If I put this on full power, I'm, I've got nowhere to go with my other lights unless I can add a second or a third light to be able to balance this out. It doesn't matter how big your lights are, how small they are, these principles are all the same. So here's our first setup. We've done several things to put this together. First off, we've got loom cubes all over the ground. They're on the lowest settings. So we just kind of get a glow through the fog. We're using chill boxes on the right and left. So those chill boxes just kind of push out a fog that just sits on the ground, kind of fills up the kind of area that we've created here because we've kind of created a little kind of corral to keep the smoke in. So smoke becomes its own element as we kind of flood the set, opens everything up and uh, makes it a lot more brighter. Then we've got four loom cubes on the back that are lighting the background on the, the right side. We've got four on the left side that are lighting the background. And we've got four that are giving us a nice rim light on her. I love the moon in the back. It's a beauty dish with four loom cubes shining through it. Gives us a great kind of glow and that gives us our moon in the background. We can lower that or raise it because it's on a stand and we'll have to retouch that stand out. But you know in the smoke, a lot of it's going to disappear anyway. She's got her lantern here which has got one. It's dialed way down. That's maybe 30 or 40 percent. So this is giving us a nice light on her face. We put a diffusion in the middle of it, so it's going to just let that kind of glow on her face. So here's our lighting breakdown. On some of them, she's holding the loom cube. It's got a nice globe on it. Just gives us a really beautiful kind of soft light kind of emanates from that spot. So that's kind of the way we're set up here. So we're going to go ahead and shoot some shots here with Olga. So there's 100 loom cubes, a little smoky shot, and let's go on to our next setup. We've got about 80 of the loom cubes on the ground, which gives us just a great glow from underneath. We'll put a little bit of smoke in that just to try that, but just the loom cubes themselves look fabulous. So our key light is a beauty dish with a grid on it. Now the beauty dish is a beautiful light. We've got four of the loom cubes in it at 70%. They've got that kind of baff uh, baffle in the front, spreads that light out, which gives us kind of a soft light with a hard edge. So it opens up the skin, looks really pretty. With that grid on there, it kind of keeps all the light off from everywhere but on her face and then throws a nice shadow onto the background. So it lights her face, gives us a great shadow on the background that's controlled. We've got our rim light, but we turned that back and we kept it off from the floor for some of them. Took a flag and cut it completely off the floor or let it open up the floor just a little bit. 
We have a lot of lights here. We have 80 plus four plus two plus one, but we don't let them get out of control. We've controlled them so it still looks moody. It looks graphic. It's just a beautiful shot in that way. We're not allowing this light to just blow everything away from us. So when we control our lights, we can get really moody results if we set them in the right place. So let's take a look at some of these images. So here's our third setup with our 100 lumen cubes. This is kind of a road warrior, Mars, red light. She's got her spear. This is Dallas Stevens. She's working with us today. So let's talk about this last setup here. This is really meant to be colored lights. We want to play with colored lights. You have that option with the Loom Cubes because they've got the small little gels that goes directly on the light with a little battery attachment in the housing. So you can put those different gels on there. Makes it easy to switch them out and change the colors. So we've got a heavy red light going through the smoke. It gives us a nice rim light from behind on the camera right side. That gives us kind of the red light we're gonna see on the side of her face. We've got our beauty dish again with that grid spot. I love that setup because it just keeps the light pooled on her face. It vignettes on her body and he'll slowly kind of pan that away from her, away from camera, out to the side. And as he does that, kind of brings it over a little bit. You'll start to see it kind of drop on the side of her face. It just gives you a really nice look on her face. Never aim it directly at her. I'm always trying to get it off to the side just a little bit so it, it kind of vignettes and it kind of transitions or gradates across her face, which is a nice look. And then in the background, we've got four bloom cubes with blue gels on each side. That gives us that nice blue background. We've got the red on her, the blue in the background. Just looks great, those two colors juxtaposition with each other. Then down below us, we've got some different yellows. We've got some blues, we've got some warm. And that just kind of gives us a little something in the smoke. We didn't want to see the lights in the smoke. We wanted to have the lights light the smoke. Let's take a look at some of these images. Now, a lot of these camera settings, everyone's going to be asking me, what are the camera settings? I've gone to sometimes a 1 25th of a second, which is pretty slow. So when Dallas is in here, she's got to hold her position and not move too much. I've got that on some of the others, I've been up as high as 1 50th of a second, but generally a longer exposure. That's the downside of continuous light. It's not as powerful as a strobe. Strobe is just very powerful and it's just a much different animal but continuous light, you can see exactly what it's doing. If it's red, it's red. If it's blue, it's blue. You see exactly what's happening. It's easy to set your lights. And also, if you wanna learn as a still photographer how to move into doing video, light with continuous light because all of video is continuous light. So it's a great place to learn and to, to become proficient using continuous light for stills. It helps you become a really great videographer as you make that transition because you have to use continuous light. So I've had Loom Cubes since they very first came out. I got my very first one, I think at NAB some time ago, a couple of years ago. They're just a fabulous little light. They're about an inch and a half square. They're waterproof. They have the ability to really to ratio up and down from 10% up to 100%. So excellent small little light you can use on set, charge, lithium battery, ready to go. So there you have it, our three lighting setups with continuous lights. Thanks to all the folks at LoomCube who brought us all the lights today, which was really exciting to be able to use that many lights. I'm excited to have these in my kit to be able to use them in the future. Thanks to Terry Groves at Makeup Magic, who really did a fabulous job moving our models from makeup to makeup, hair to hair to makeup to makeup to makeup. To makeup. Anyway, she went through one and the other, and there we go. We had all this as we went through the day. So Terry did a great job for us. Thanks to my wonderful wife, Julene, who did all the wardrobe. Did a great job there as well and Andy and all the rest of the crew, and thanks to Dallas, uh, and my word, my mom and my grandma, you know, my, my granddad was a great guy too, and my, my grandma was wonderful. So thanks to all of you, so keep those cameras rolling. And keep on clicking. I think she means it. If you love stop motion, you wanna learn how to do it, get over to thuslenlens.com, go to our store. We've got a great download there from Trisha Zemp, a beginning download that'll teach you the basics of stop motion, and an advanced download that'll help move your work to a professional level or you can bundle the two together at a greatly reduced cost. So get over to thuslenlens.com, go to the store, get your stop motion download. Subscribe to the Slant and Lens. It's a seamless experience with many, many colors. In fact, I can think of 86 reasons why you should subscribe. Your grandma subscribes, your aunt subscribes, you love photography, you love people who love photography, you have a camera, you have a lens, you have a tripod, you need to learn more about photography, you wish you knew more about photography.